Last time I told you guys that I had a high conviction play. You watched me in a matter of a few weeks make a million dollars. Well, today, guys, I have another high conviction play and a project I just recently discovered. And in this video, I'm going to break down why I have high conviction on this altcoin. This is Vertex. And I go into a deep dive in the project and tell you why I think it's primed to take off here in the next few months. All right, guys, if that sounds good to you, make sure you like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. What up? My name is Kyle Chasse. I've been in crypto for 11 years, bringing you guys all the alpha that you need to know to take full advantage of this upcoming super cycle. All right, guys, now I want to prime this off by saying that I don't have as high conviction as I did in Chainlink, but I do have high conviction enough to where I went and bought a big bag of this today. I'll also tell you somebody else who's thinking that about waiting to get on this and why I disagree with that person. That is Rand. <laughs> and I'll, I'll go from Crypto Venture. I'll go into that all my, my reasoning and logic why as well. And just full transparency, guys, like I could be very wrong in this video. We all could be wrong, but I'm going to go through the data and show you guys why I'm very, very excited to share this with you. And you make your own decision at the end of the video. All right, guys, let's get into it. So first thing we're going to talk about here is I'm going to give you a little bit of background, okay? Now, if you watch my video where I talk about decentralization as a, as a you know, I think the title was like CZ predicts the next, uh, you know, hot narrative. Now, that is becoming more apparent than ever. So we're going to go and talk about that here just for a little bit, just for a second here. So first of all, I'm not going to read this for you, but what you need to know is that the CFTC now, this time, is coming after Bybit, which is unfortunate. Um you know, and basically what they're doing, what they did is they sent, and I'll show you to show them to you. They sent these uh, these letters to all the Coinbase users, and said, "Dear customer, we write you to inform you that Coinbase has been served a subpoena in the above reference matters, seeking information related to your account and account transaction activity. No action is required from you, but Coinbase may respond to the subpoena unless served before November 30th, with a motion to quash or other objection to the subpoena that has been filed with the court." including by sending information concerning your Coinbase account to the Commodities Futures Trading Commission. So this is quite unfortunate. Basically what happened is CFTC went to Coinbase and said, guys, I need you to send me, I need you to give me the customer information of anybody that sent funds from Bybit to Coinbase. And they're doing this to be able to see who, which Americans were and using Buy, Bybit, right? And so they can start looking into this and building a case against Bybit. So this is building the case for, I, I just read this, I just explained this to you. So this is building a case for why decentralized uh, finance or DeFi is very, very important here. And you can see that this is a pretty good thread here. They said uh, they took the, they took the uh, Binance settlement money and shoved it straight into a case against Bybit. When I said the establishment Democrats hate crypto, I mean, they truly just want things to completely die. There's two correct takeaways from this coin or otherwise coinbase stock is literally going to infinity this is because america is clearing the way for what i believe to be the etf greenlit and also for coinbase which the biggest shareholders are blackrock fidelity vanguard the the goliaths right they have huge amounts of shares like some of like up to five or seven percent of the company they own so of course they want coinbase to fly and, uh, and number two is DeFi perp DEXs need to get their act together because the use case has never been higher. And then he also says one more thing is that ETF seems incredibly likely. I just shared that with you guys as well. One more thing too, this is just getting people in the United States all pissed off just because so much uh, enforcement by action versus creating proper legislation. But let's just listen to Charles go off on a rant here for a second. Then they come in and say it's a security. Okay, well, what the hell does that mean? If it's decentralized, how, how does Bitcoin register? Oh, but it's not. Then explain to me the fucking difference between Bitcoin and Ethereum and Cardano and the rest of the gang. Explain it to me like I'm five years old. Run the goddamn Howie test on it and show me the difference between the two. Tell me, is there an expectation of return with the goddamn orange pill moon boys? It's there. There's so many different planks and angles that you can take a look at this thing from. And by the way, if you subpoena an attack about three different entities, you could perform a 51% attack on Bitcoin because that's the way the hash power works. 
but it's decentralized apparently and team orange gets a complete pass it's a pathetic fucking joke it's an absolutely pathetic joke you know so anyway that's charles pissed off i, I don't blame him we, everyone's pissed off that we but you know and adam back comes in here who's a big bitcoin maxi and says it's very simple charles Bitcoin did not do an ICO. Most people thought it had no value. It was mined from zero. It is decentralized. There is no CEO, ICO, war chested foundation, and corporation, etc. So Cardano, ETH, etc. Clearly passed Howie. Bitcoin is a commodity and is not. So anyway, it doesn't really matter. That was a nice rant by Charles. Um, but let's get into the case of the perpetual DEX, right? So Vertex is something that recently started trading. And let's see if it, just refresh real quick and see if it's the same market cap. Okay, $75.5 million right now uh, is the market cap. And I'll tell you why fully diluted is less important as we go through the show document here. But basically to be very, very clear, I, I feel like we can rely on the market cap number exclusively at least for the next five months or so. And I'll show you why when we get into the token locks and the emissions in just a bit. But the question is, and now I want to address something. Let me show you first and I'll address it here. So this is Ran on a show yesterday or no, today. Was it today? I'm seeing a lot of these charts. All the charts that I see are positive. Look at this. Every single chart that you see around people is positive. You've got YouTubers making uh, 10x altcoin videos. will make millionaires. And I love these YouTubers, just by the way. <laughs> but um, huge love Bitcoin too, move tonight. 4 million. 100x altcoins in 2024. Um, There's me. See? Then he has, he has another one. And again, I, I do like these channels. So the next Casper, the next crypto big thing, these altcoins will make millionaires. We know that when these things happen and when these charts start to hit the market, right? So you've got these charts hitting the market. Um, so he, he, so Rand, and the reason I brought this up is because Rand, he talks about Vertex briefly in this video. But he says, and I'm just doing this because I know a lot of you guys probably watch Rand's channel. If you don't, I suggest that you go subscribe. Ran is the man. I love him and his channel and everything they're doing. But if I've got a different opinion about something, I'm going to let you guys know. And in this case, I think this video is way off basis. His point is, is that he goes in saying that we're due for a big pullback. And I've showed you guys before many, many charts on this channel, how in a bull run, we oftentimes have pullbacks in Bitcoin from 15 to as much as 38%. And when that happens, altcoins get annihilated. And we will have that for sure in this upcoming bull run, but I'm, I'm doubtful we get any of that major pullback at least until the ETF approval. And I think that even then, you know, let's say, let's assume it happens January 10th. We know it's the final deadline. Let's assume that happens January 10th. I do believe that that's, that will not be a sell the news event. I believe the sell the news event, if it happens, will probably be the day that the ETF actually starts trading. So we assume that the ETF gets approved in January on January 10th. And if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you know that we've talked about how many experts in the field believe that the ETF will actually start trading one to two months post approval. I believe that that might be the first major sell-off. So we're looking at a February to March major sell-off. But in the meantime, in the meantime, what we have guys is we have the possibility of the markets exploding before that, before then, and then we get, then getting a pullback. So this is why for me today, I decided to get a bag of this. And if you're undecided, whether I'm right or Rand's right or whatever, then maybe your best bet is to dollar cost average in. If you think that there's a chance of a big pullback between now and the ETF approval, then dollar cost average in. If you, and the ETF approval guys is, is potentially going to happen within the next, you know, by January 10th, which gives us one month and 11 days or whatever, right? So dollar cost average into something if you are concerned. But for me, I think this is underexposed right now. Rand mentioned it, but look at there's it's, it's 2,400 people on the watch list. Almost nobody knows about this. Rand has a team of researchers bigger than mine. I've got a team of researchers and we both came up and discovered Vertex today. But whereas I think it's undiscovered and I think this thing has potential to pump and we'll explain that. Um, you know, he thinks that because it has pumped, you know, 100% essentially the last seven days from its all time low, that it's, it's already bound for a cool off. I, I don't think so, right? That's not a huge amount of appreciation. It is, but that's also from the all time lows, right? And this thing has, in my opinion, a lot of room to run. 
if we look at some of its competitors, something like synthetics, the market cap is $1.1 billion, right? And I did the math just before the show here, and you can see that's a 14.4 X to go to get to synthetics. And I'll show you why I think that's potential in just a minute here. But like, let's say you put in $10,000 into this thing right now, you know, that's going to turn into $144,000 if it was to do this 14 point something X, right? So anyway, this is essentially a very, very, very good protocol that has doing some mind blowing numbers. So let's get into it. So what is Vertex? Vertex was you can trade, earn and borrow all in one DEX. It's like a mega DEX, right? And it's on Arbitrum. So like GMX is also on Arbitrum, uh, which is also bullish to be Arbitrum. Arbitrum also does, hasn't seen to have its pump like uh, like AVAX and, and Solana did. So I'm going to be looking into Arbitrum and seeing if there might be a, a pump loading here soon. But uh, so you could trade universal margin, which is, uh, you know, basically your entire um, deposits act as margin or collateral for all your trades, which a lot of traders actually love that. Earn and borrow. They have a built in money market plus an order book and an AMM built together. So they, they built this like hybrid model of an order book which is limit orders, stop losses, everything like that, but also in some technology, some for like an automated market maker. So they combine that to making this kind of like hybrid order book and matchmaking system. Uh, also what they're, they're really, really uh, boasting about here is the latency, the speed, order matching execution in 30 milliseconds. The Vertex is powerful as your favorite sex. So Ethereum DEXs take 13.23 long, painful seconds. An L2 DEX, 1.31 seconds, not so bad. Popular sexes, anywhere from one to 50 milliseconds. And Vertex is about the same as a Binance or something like that. So you have very, very, very fast trading experience. But I, I also did, um, also guys, uh, there's rewards and stuff that you can do. Keep in mind, all I've done is bought my own bag of this. I don't know who the team is. And I have definitely no affiliation other than affiliate link I put down below because you can do this too. So if you like Vertex and you want to go farm some of these rewards that, that are being offered right now, and we'll get into those in just a minute, um, you can use my affiliate link. It'll boost your rewards by 10%. And you can also get your own affiliate link and go tell your friends to sign up as well. Um, but anyway, that's beside the point. But I will leave it down in the description below if you are interested in trying Vertex out. It's interesting, right? Because you can go trade leverage in a decentralized exchange where you don't have to worry about KYC on an exchange. You don't have to worry about, you know, the counterparty risk of your assets. You custody your own assets uh, when you use a decentralized exchange. So it's a very, very, very clean in, uh, in interface. Now, here's why, what, it, where I start to get very, very bullish of just looking who's involved here, right? And you've got Wintermute, Dexterity Capital, GSR, Jane Street, and HRT. Let me just explain to you how important these are. So Wintermute and GSR, I didn't pull up the Wikipedia for these guys because I know about them already. They they do hundreds of like like hundreds of billions of dollars of volume. They're, they're two of the biggest crypto market makers in the entire space. So when they're coming in to provide liquidity and help provide infrastructure and knowledge in a perpetual DEX, that's a really, really good sign. Now let's look at some of these other names that were less familiar to me. Like Jane Street is familiar, but I didn't realize just how big they are. So you can see Jane Street Capital, typically referred to as Jane Street, is a, is a global proprietary trading firm. Jane Street Capital employs more than 2,000 people in five offices in New York, London, Hong Kong, Amsterdam, and Singapore. The firm trades a broad range of asset classes on more than 200 venues in 45 countries. The company is one of the largest market makers, trading more than $17 trillion worth of securities in 2020. $17 trillion of trading volume in, in 2020. <clears throat> Insane. So this is Jane Street, right? Jane Street is huge. Now you let's go look at <clears throat> let's go look at Hudson River. Uh, so HRT is first and foremost a math and technology company. We are engineers and researchers working on uh, as one team to solve difficult problems and trading millions of shares a daily uh, a day on the, uh, the world's financial markets. So it's a technology and a math company. We are engineers and researchers working as one team. So what I feel is going on here. Well, let me, let me just give you some more stats. Hudson River Trading, a quantitative trading, uh, trading firm headquartered in New York City and founded in 2002. In 2014, it accounted for 5% of all trading in the United States. <laughs> That's nuts, guys. Nuts. So 
and then they in 2021 the first quarter they made 1.2 billion dollars so these guys are massive and then you also have dexterity capital not a lot about them here but making crypto markets fast liquid and efficient consistent consistent uh, consistently redefining algorithmic trading for all areas of the cryptocurrency world. We specialize in market neutral, neutral, neutral strategies. That means we thrive regardless of whether the bulls, bears are winning with offices in San Francisco, New York, London, and we run strategies 24 seven around the globe. So you can see guys that there is a pretty powerful set of investors and partners here involved in Vertex. Now, I don't know to what extent if they're just investors, if they're market makers, but I don't think that Jane Street would come along and just invest into anybody. Jane Street is like very traditional, very old school. And what, what I have a feeling is going on here is these guys came together and they said, let's build. And they know that where we're heading, right? If you believe in decentralization, if you believe in DEXs, if you believe in DeFi, then building the world's best decentralized perpetual exchange and spot exchange and money markets is extremely interesting proposal. So why not to get together with your other massive whale buddies and build something sick? And this is what they've actually done here. So, uh, so this, to, you know, when I, went, when I went and got involved and looked at what they were doing here, this made me pretty, pretty interested in getting involved. I also believe that having these powerful market makers on board are going to support the token price. And I, you know, Again, none of this is financial advice. Do your own research. This is just what it's making me feel. My, my, my thoughts, my logic going into this. So it's a powerhouse. Now, I did, I did have that show to you guys a while ago. I, I talked about the different perpetual DEXs, right? GMX and DYDX and things like this. And I, wa I want to bring this to your attention right now because DYDX is about to unlock $500 million. Their first major unlock here, 30% of the supply. And uh, so if you are holding any DYDX right now, you need to be aware of that. This could significantly affect the price in the short term. And so I just want to bring that to you guys' attention because we did talk about that recently, DYDX. Now let's look at the token uh, metrics for Vertex. What we really want to look at here is we really want to look at the founding team, we want to look at advisors, we want to look at early investors, right? And the initial token phase as well. And then we need to go ahead and look at the emissions. So we, now, we know that right now, as of launch a few days, like, like five days ago, whatever, there's 16% of the circulating supply. And we know that at the end of year one, there'll be an additional 27.58%. So when I first looked at this, I got a little bit worried thinking, wow, 27, almost 28% of circulating uh, new inflation coming. But when I looked at the actual emission, emission schedule, which is here, you can see that, so we're basically here at Genesis, right? And what we need to look at is when does a team and early early investors and team start getting their tokens? Well, in month six. So if we think of this as month one is basically December, January, February, March, right? And so April, May. So well, to, to basically the having. We're not going to have any big unlocks happening from investors or team members. And so that's why I think that we have, uh, I don't know that we'll see major pullback. This is again, why another reason I disagree with what Rand's saying and his logic makes perfect sense, right? He said, I want to buy this token cheaper. And if it never goes cheaper, that's fine. I'm okay. And just not having it in my portfolio. And I agree with that logic 100% in a lot of cases. I just happened to go on a deeper dive today and look at Vertex and I believe that there's not going to be a lot of sell pressure coming forward because there's just no more major unlocks. Sure, there was 10% from the initial token phase that, that's, that's unlocked. So I don't know how much of that will actually end up coming out. I don't know what their gains are either. But I believe that people are now, if they haven't dumped in this first few days, if, token, if price has gone up, they're probably going to hold on to that. You might see some minor sales, but I don't think we're going to see a 50% pullback uh, like Rand was talking about. He didn't say that specifically for Vertex, but... He said overall, if he said Bitcoin can have a 30% pullback, which means alts come down 80, 90%. So the token utility is that you could uh, you know, staking Vertex and uh, as a means to contribute to the safety of the Vertex ecosystem, rewarding variable levels of contrib contributions and commitments to the protocol over the long term. Rewards are designed to incentivize ongoing participation by contributors who either transact or trade on the protocol, platform off-chain marketing, or provide referral activities. 
Staked Vertex is, a, is required to participate in the protocol's incentive program as both an indicator of the user's commitment to insurance of standards. Beyond this requirement, Staking Vertex generates a user score known as VOVRTX that also plays a significant role in incent incentivizing security for long-term commitment. So basically what happens is you, you go stake your Vertex tokens. The longer you stake, the bigger boost multiplier that you get. And there's a lot of rewards mechanisms built in here. Uh, if you add LP by joining the liquidity pools, you get uh, protocol fees. But 50% of all the fees generated in the protocol go back to the staker. So it's very incentivizing. And we'll get into this kind of uh, this kind of flywheel feedback loop mechanism that's built into this in just a minute here. One thing I, I got sidetracked for earlier I wanted to talk about was this feature right here. You know, it's it's a first this one click trading. This is uh, one form of essentially account abstraction where you essentially like on Ethereum, every time that you want to trade something, you have to use your MetaMask or whatever. You have to give permission to an application every single like to trade on that thing. And then you have to approve it with one click trading. That means that you've given permission for Vertex to bypass the permission for new assets every time. And it allows you just to do one click and you don't have to go there, sign things, pay gas, all this stuff. It just makes it much, much, much nicer user experience. Now let's check this out, guys. This is actually really exciting. Uh, so this is DeFi Llama here. And we're showing you derivatives exchanges and their volume. Look at number one is Vertex, right? Vertex, 24 hour. This is like centralized exchange types of volumes. Like, let's just go like, let's just look at this, right? Let's just bring this over here. Exchanges, crypto exchange, uh, derivatives exchanges. So $1.6 billion is good. Derivatives. So it's not far off here from like KuCoin, for example. It's uh, you know, it's not quite up to the level of like BitGet or OKX or whatever this deep coin that looks very, very funny, weird. Um, but anyway, it's it's big, big volume for a decentralized exchange. This is massive. It's it's doing daily volume bigger than DYDX much big, almost 10 times, like bigger than 10 times GMX. So much bigger than everybody. DYDX is the second and it's it's still crushing it by like 50% more than DYDX. Lifetime volume, cumulative volume is $20 billion, guys. This is like no small feat. And you can see all the statistics here, guys, are up and to the right, exactly what we wanna see for positive growth in a protocol. You can see in the early days it launched in April, there was not a lot going on, not a lot going on, not a lot going on, and then boom, explosion. <laughs> People are catching on. People are using it. This is what you want to see. You want to see statistics of growth. Trading volume, cumulative trading volume is this pink line. Daily volume is this uh, this other is it weekly? I don't know. Weekly volume. But stats are up and to the right. New users coming on. You can see cumulative new users coming up on board. Very very nice to see. Protocol fees. Everything is very very good here, and you can see that they've what 24 hour trading volume all-time highs for them, $1.57 billion, insane. So another thing that's gonna feed this this whole loop here is the ARB incentive program. We've talked about this before. I think it was the STIP uh, incentive program. So what happened is that Vertex applied for the Arbitrum incentive program. They got approved for 3 million ARB tokens. And so that is getting fed into uh, the more that you're trading on the DEX, the more that you're gonna be rewarded an extra ARB token. So you can earn both Vertex in rewards fees and ARB tokens in rewards fees as well. This is gonna feed at least for the next three months, but probably for the next six months or something like that. Perpetual high APY for people who are using this exchange. Uh, and so you can see this, this goes all the way until, so ARB trading incentives go until January 31st. So we'll, we're gonna continue to see higher volume, which means higher fees. Higher fees means more rewards for stakers. The more rewards for stakers, the more that they're gonna stake to get more rewards. And it's this positive feedback loop, at least until the end of January. But the Vertex tokens also perform the same way. So even though when the ARB incentive went, runs out, you'll see, should, and we'll get into that in just a second here. So Mai's, Xerox Mai says, on Vertex, doing more volume than DYDX, more fees and synthetics, but trading at an FTV one eighth and one third respectively. I've made the case why I think FTV is less relevant. I'm right now, we can reassess this thing in four months from now, but I think that we're gonna see bullish momentum in the next four or five months. We, we know that we've got 
five and a half months until we have more token unlocks coming. And so we'll reassess. But even if we look at it, the token unlocks after, it's not huge. It doesn't increase tremendously. You can see on month six, it goes from, you know, inflation rate of 1.31% a month to 2.89. And so it's bigger, it's double, but if we're well into a bull market right now, that's it's easily to be absorbed, especially if this thing just completely takes off. Another thing too that I, I wanna show you too is, I just, just remember this too. I think what's very, very interesting here, guys, actually, this blog post, so crypto trading protocol Vertex eyes institutional traders on Arbitrum. Now you can tell from this cap table that they are looking for institutional uh, demand. These guys are institutional over here. So the nice thing about this is if they are attracting institutional traders, then that means that that's gonna increase protocol fees, which means that you with staking this token, getting in fairly early in my opinion, can, can reap the benefits of high volume, high protocol fees, bit, getting paid back to stakers. This is a really cool thing in my opinion. So where are we? Where were we? Where were we here? So this, this is showing you, I, I have to verify this again. I, I'm not, I looked in the dashboard. I didn't see the same kind of results here, but I know that you can get up to 200% APY right now from staking Vertex. This thing here says, you know, 375% or something like that. So I don't know how this guy came up with, the, with this thing, but he also says, another element of price action is that people have recently discovered Vertex staking and its APRs. The team has mentioned 50% of trading fees will be distributed to stakers. Using this versus the, the, the dollar value of Vertex staked, we can see how ridiculous APRs currently are. Oh, so I guess instead of the, yeah, calculating uh, the dollar percentage of AP, APR like they're doing the dashboard, he's saying that, that with the price increasing, it also increases your APR in respect to the price increase of the token. Okay, so now we go into, he gets into some of these, uh, so, run, so running the same delta neutral long spot short per playbook as blur. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Say that five times fast. Running the same delta neutral long spot short per playbook as blur. Running the same delta neutral long spot short per playbook as blur. Whew. I expect this to go up much further when Vertex perps do eventually launch. Apes will ape, apes will ape in the spot to capture this farm AP, APR. This happens all the time, guys. Like, it just creates this big flywheel effect, uh, and people it just this is how you essentially pompa mentals, right? So he adjusted some of his pushback, right? Pushback one, volumes are fake and wash trading, etc. Now this could be very, very true, but in this case, it doesn't matter if the volume is wash trading. Wash trading is when the market makers just trade back and forth and they trade a million dollars here, a million dollars there, buy a million, sell a million, that's $2 million in volume. They do that a hundred times a day, you know, massive volumes, and that's not actual real customers. But we did show you earlier in the graph that actual customer growth was happening. But the point here is it doesn't matter. Whether, whether it's wash trading or not, the, even if they are wash trading, they still have to pay the fees. Those fees are paid, they are on chain, and they are being redistributed to the stakers. So that's what we're talking about. That's, yeah, that's the whole part of my narrative here is that the staking fees rewards is gonna drive more people to buy a token, which is gonna charge more people to stake, removing circulating supply, less demand, more, so less, less supply, more demand, pumps the price. Number two. Once rewards stop, the volume stop. Vertex incentives are four and a half million dollars a month, are pretty much held constant for the next six months. So this isn't a huge problem in the short term. ARB STIP also adds flavor to help, main, help maintain volumes, $2.5 million over three months. So you can see that there's gonna be, so this is why I'm very, very bullish and I'm not waiting for a pullback here because this flywheel is gonna get airdrop, not, not, like yield farmers and DeFi, DeFi maxis over this thing to farm these high rewards, at least in the short term. And high inflation is another thing, uh, valid pushback, but the only qualm I have, I, but I, um, the only qualm I have, but I expect demand for Vertex staking to fully offset this plus more, which is what we just talked about. So another thing is Jose uh, Macedo here, who's one of the, co the founding members of Delphi Digital or Delphi Labs, which is one of the most highly respected research labs or research companies and investment companies in the space. They're based out of America, all kinds of the A16Z, Sequoia, everybody uses their research to help understand the markets. And Jose says, Vertex is, the, is, is in my opinion, the best on-chain perps product currently in the market. He says, I'm a cross margin maxi. So that's high validation from somebody. 
Like, I trust his judgment. And Patty the Pirate here says, basically, what he wanted to show you here is the volume. So a lot of chatter on X about Vertex after successful to token launch. Here are my thoughts. Volume is very impressive. 90-day volume is, uh, is marginally less than synthetics at half the FDV. Fees are quite over underwhelming. Um, fundamentals are probably irrelevant in the short term, which is what we've been saying here. Market likes the new shiny thing, Pith and Tia. And I don't think this is that a, a good pump yet. I think we're getting early to this, like seriously. Um, Vertex not listed on Binance yet. It probably will with these market makers on board. I would not be surprised if a Binance listing was in the works next few months. Can see it going to $1 more very, very quickly. now. You can see here that we've got synthetics here, volume in the past 90 days, $11.2 billion. Volume in the last 90 days on Vertex is the same, basically, $11.2 billion. And like we showed you before, significantly less market cap. And again, you can refer and earn. So guys, I hope that you found a lot of value from this. I, I, I personally, after doing this research, have high conviction in this. And that's why I decided to allocate a fairly large bag, not as big, not as big as my chain link position, but I do think that in the short term, you know, when it comes down to making very, very, very good gains, it's probably hard to find something better than Vertex. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up today. I'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Bye-bye.